Good evening, you're watching Sideline on MNB World. This time we've invited Dr. Bollard Stigmingjing, Executive Director of the American Center for Mongolian Studies, to talk to us on Zoom. Hello, Dr. Bollard Stig. Thank you for joining us. Uh, is you're speaking to us from New York. Good morning to you. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, good evening mm -hmm. in Mongolia. Thank you. So you're the executive director of an American organization that supports Mongolists, uh, which is called the American Center for Mongolian Studies, or ACMS. Can you introduce our viewers to ACMS and its mission? Well, American Center for Mongolian Studies is a nonprofit organization, uh, educational uh, organization that supports the uh, development of Mongolian studies in exchange uh, with in uh, Mongolia and in Asia. There are many projects that are conducted by SEMS, uh, ones that promote researchers who are conducting or planning to conduct research in Mongolia. Uh, can you share a bit about ACMS's main projects? Yeah, well, I think uh, for us is uh, we support uh, researchers, scholars, and students uh, who's doing uh, their studies on Mongolia. Uh, we have some number of fellowships. So we also um, have field school in the summertime. We do uh, support uh, collaboration between um, American scientists and Mongolian scientists. Um, so uh, this fellowship uh, helps to support them. And also we support, uh, we do provide um, uh, some resources for scientists, books and publications and papers been published on Mongolia, topic related to Mongolia. Uh, so we have a research library over 5,000 books and manuscripts and publications. Uh, most of them in English, um, mm -hmm. all on Mongolia related. Of course, we have uh, Mongolian, um, you know, publications. Mm -hmm. um, so the main uh, supports we do give the, uh, to our researchers uh, fellowship, we have uh, field research fellowship. So this fellowship supports um, faculty, professors, and scientists uh, and students um, who wanted to do short-term uh, research in Mongolia. So we do provide them step in, um, some support for logistical help. And the most importantly, 2019, um, we launched a new program. It's called uh, Field School. Yeah, Mongolia Field School. Um, uh, so students and uh, uh, interested from US and Mongolia, they, they can participate in this school in the summer for some period of time and it's very interactive. And also they go to different parts of Mongolia learning about, for example, mining, um, also um, some you know, climate change and Buddhism. We do have also uh, language programs uh, mm -hmm. for who wanted to do research in Mongolia. So we, we do run um, these language programs in different levels. Of course, most of our uh, students for the language programs are university professors from US and scholars and researchers and students. So ACMS does lots of things. It has a physical library, digital library, uh, supports research, conducting field research, uh, and also offers Mongolian language courses. Can you tell us about the inner workings of your organization? Uh, like who do you work with and what kind of assistance do you provide to researchers? We are a member organization. We do have institutional memberships. So we have you know, some number of uh, US uh, universities and museums. Um, the scientists from those institutions do research in Mongolia. Through the membership, we do provide some even logistical help. If mm -hmm. you know, scientists from US comes to Mongolia, even we pick up them from airport, mm -hmm. you know, have some translation. And also we um, help them to connect with uh, scientists in Mongolia and research institutions in Mongolia. Um, so um, those are things, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to learn more about the Mongolia Field School. It started in 2019 and gave researchers the opportunity to take part in field studies in Mongolia during summer. Uh, but as we know, the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted plans for visits uh, travel last year and this year. So what are your plans to, carry, uh, to keep carrying out this program during this time around? 
Well, that's a really good question. I mean, you know, like every institutions have to adjust what's going on right now. So for us is, you know, the obvious thing would be going um, in a virtual. So we just about to launch our uh, virtual Mongolia um, uh, studies online courses. Basically it's um, our field school uh, model, but it's going into online. Uh, students cannot participate in person, but we will have a series of courses on different topics. And so we about to la uh, launch these um, online courses this month and with the uh, uh, three topics. It will be Buddhism in Mongolia, um, also uh, mining, um, and then mining and environment. Um, so those three courses will be run uh, throughout um, spring, and then we have a summer uh, online course, and then going into fall. So, you know, if, you know, if we often, you um, you know, hopefully, you know, traveling has become normal and mm -hmm. we hope to, um, to run the field school next summer. Uh, I see. So I've got a question. How many members does ACMS have? Uh, how many people have you supported through your program so far? So over like 100 active members we have. So, um, well, uh, so we supported over 300 uh, uh, you know, student professors and researchers. Uh, for, um, you know, support through our fellowship. But of course, in terms of application, we have much more uh, numbers than, you know, 300. Um, so it's, you know, I think the most important thing here is um, for us, um, in terms of in Mongolia, for researchers, we really want to support uh, also Mongolian researchers uh, in terms of work they're doing. Um, the difficult part of here is the language barrier. Because of language, um, our scientists in Mongolia, they couldn't publish an English publication, uh, even they wanted to. Um, so we really wanna help and give support for them uh, to overcome this uh, uh, you know, barrier. Because we don't want to restrict to a very uh, limited number of uh, field of studies. We want to expand all across different, uh, you know, science fields. Um, so for that sense, um, starting with my job last December, we started running some of our programs in Mongolian. But we can come in to provide translation. Uh, for example, there's we have a virtual speaker series. Mm -hmm. So we do put subtitles that... You know, our American scientists and their collaborators uh, and scholars can read. Previously, all programs, our programs were in English. So that really limited uh, participation from Mongolian scientists. So can you tell us how you create the schedule for Mongolian and American speakers? Uh, do they go one after another or does that not matter? Um, so what we're doing is uh, basically even numbers of month a Mongolian uh, speaker series, odd numbers of month uh, in English. So then we can get both side of our participants can engage in to learn uh, what's going on in terms of Mongolian studies. So as you have your bi-monthly speaker series, uh, there will be two Mongolian speakers on one month. Uh, for example, last month there were two Mongolian speakers and the next month there will be two American speakers. Is that correct? Yes, correct. So, I mean, two speaker series that we have is one is fe uh, featured speaker mm -hmm. series. Uh, you know, single uh, scientists would be presenting results, and and then second part, uh, uh, second uh, virtual speaker series is a panel. So we bring group of scientists. We're talking about uh, one uh, specific questions from uh, the same field but different approaches. So. Um, for example, like in uh, December, we had a um, topic on sedentary um, culture of Mongolia. So we invited uh, scientists um, from um, like history, archaeology, and museum curator, mm -hmm. and also even a um, person who specialized in um, urban planning. So given the history of how, you know, uh, our um, 
uh, sedentary lifestyle being all through the history um, and the center how we are right now, you know, more contemporary issues. And I think I mean, we talk about nomadic culture all the time. Yes, but in the part of also in Mongolian history, we had cities. Mm-hmm. And so we had our own cultures and, um, you know, we have some archaeological artifacts been found. Um, so those are kind of topics that's really important also know. We really wanted to diversify in terms of, you know, um, topics that we're discussing. So one of the many projects carried out by ACMS is the Cultural Heritage Program. Can you share us what the project is about? Yeah, so starting from 2015, uh, we, you know, uh, focused on um, cultural heritage uh, projects. When we talk about cultural heritage, uh, you know, most of our cultural heritage uh, uh, in museums. And so 2015, uh, we... um, got a Henry Louis Foundation uh, funding, and that funding allowed us to work with National uh, Museum. Um, so National Museum has the, uh, the largest collection uh, in terms of, you know, archeology span and artifacts and cultural heritage. Um, so every four years, Mongolia has inventory, um, goes through all collection and, um, so it's very tedious work that that you cannot do that, you know, within a month. It took years to finish. By the time they finish, next four year come through, they have to do inventory over again. So we started this barcoding inventory system um, project. That project uh, went successful. Um, so we have also another um, cultural heritage project basically focusing on um, textile preservation. Um, so more specifically focusing on, uh, we have some looting issues uh, and poaching problems in archaeology. So, you know, through these actions, there's a lot of things been damaged or stolen, disappear. And um, so National University um, and Nomad Science and U.S. organization um, are working with us on this project, uh, collecting um textiles that been, um, you know, found and looted in poached uh, archaeological sites. And also we have Culture Heritage Fellowship and through fellowships, we supported museum people to go to US and stay for several months and they get trained. Um, and uh, it's basically a practical uh, field experience for them. And so far we had um, uh, museum education um, uh, fellowship for cultural heritage uh, uh, fellowship and also curator. So uh, a curator from Mongolia went to uh, Ruben Museum of Art. So we're doing this project jointly with Ruben Museum of Art. So they do, um, you know, have our museum specialists and uh, train them on specific uh, skills um, and knowledge. And also uh, through um, uh, funding from U.S. Uh, embassy, so we were able to get three uh, museum uh, conservation uh, specialists uh, from Mongolia to go to U.S. for several months and visiting different conservation uh, laboratories and museums and learning and exchanging their knowledge and skills with American uh, conservation uh, specialists. So what kind of projects are you trying to, are you planning to conduct in the future? There's one uh, project is uh, important. Like I said, we have a research library. We do have a digital library that accessible to um, our members uh, to see, um, to access to its uh, JSTOR that they can access to over 200 uh, science journals and publications online through our um, uh, center's website. Uh, so uh, there's a project, uh, Francis, uh, Francis Woodman Cleves uh, digital um, uh, digitation uh, project. Um, so uh, uh, Cleves, Francis Cleves, he was a Mongolist and a Harvard professor. He had a, um, you know, number of very important rare books and publications related to Mongolian studies. 
you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, um, those um, publications and books and even unpublished manuscripts written by him uh, been uh, in um, placed in the some church uh, in New Hampshire um, needed really close uh, care to take care of those libraries. So uh, it came through to us through, um, uh, you know, Library of Congress specialist, Dr. Uh, Sarodlitsyn um, brought our attention to that. And so we working with him to preserve, protect these uh, important library collections. So that project is actually ongoing. We uh, raised some uh, crowdfunding uh, through our website to getting uh, public support to help us to get this project to going forward. Um, so also we um, uh, working on a project with, um, uh, you know, a museum specialist on Tanka project. But this tanka is actually um, covers um, quite you know high numbers in different Mongolian museum collection. Mm -hmm. So really needed uh, to uh, conserve and preserve and protect um, that tanka. Uh, um, so we working on that project that probably would be uh, several years of project to uh, run through. It will be similar kind of cultural heritage project that we've done um, uh, doing like textile conservation project. And so this time uh, we're focusing on Buddhist uh, tankar uh, conservation project. Um, so those are uh, new project um, that going forward and also we are uh, planning to do a mentorship act, uh, a mentorship project that um, pairing US um, uh, scientists with Mongolian students and Mongolian scientists with American students and so cultural I mean you kind of like exchange in in the way um, that they can uh, help to support each other. Thank you. So our time is coming to an end. Uh, to wrap up our conversation, what would you say is the importance of organizations like American Center for Mongolian Studies? Yeah, well, I think um, the importance of you know having uh, this kind of centers is um, uh, you know we're connecting uh, two countries. Um, we really want uh, you know scientists from different countries know about Mongolia. Um, in terms of research and, you know, um, in terms of science. So we are a platform and we are, um, you know, connecting um, uh, and also be supporting researchers to, um, you know, especially for Mongolian researchers, you know, they wanted to do their works internationally so we can bring them out in international, international level that, um, they can have a collaboration. Science is really important. This is international collaboration. So for that sense, you know, our institute provides that service and opportunity and resources. And um, so we really want to invite scientists in Mongolia and US and uh, you know, in, uh, universities and institutions to work with us. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to talk to us, Dr. Bolotsik. Uh, it was great to learn about your organization, the American Center for Mongolian Studies. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me and really happy to be you know, talking about this exciting organization and um, getting people to know. And this is not just for scientists, also public <laughs> should know about our uh, organization. Science has to have a public. Um, so our programs also, not just only scientists, but also for public. Um, <laughs> so anybody who is interested you know, in any topics of Mongolia in terms of research or any, you know, if you're interested, any ordinary people, you know, can connect with us, become our member. So it's all welcome. You've watched Sideline on MNB World. This time we talked to Dr. Walter Tsegminjing, Executive Director of the American Center for Mongolian Studies, an organization which supports academic projects and exchanges in Mongolia and inner Asian region. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.